With DevVox now being in public preview, I guess it's time to try out one of its more advertised features. The ability to have multiple images and templates and have your devs use different kinds of images for the different kinds of dev boxes. And the way DevBox as a service works is that IT admins, they manage the, the images and make those available through dev box definitions. The team leads or project managers then make use of these dev box definitions in dev box pools, which are then assigned to users, which in turn they can then use to create their dev boxes. The service makes use of the Azure Compute Gallery in order to provide these images. And if you already have images stored in compute galleries, you can just attach these to your dev center. And that means that you can reuse whatever images you have as long as they follow the same requirements that a Windows 365 image has. And that means they need to be uh, generation two, they need to be Windows based, they need to use the trusted launch feature, and they need to be generalized through sysprep. Once you attach a compute gallery to the dev center, the DevBox service does a couple of checks against this gallery to make sure that the images in it are able to be used with the DevBox service. And to do that, it needs some permissions to that gallery. And it needs this access both on a user assigned managed identity that you provide and through the Windows 365 service principle. And if you do this through the portal, then this is all done automatically for you. But if you do it through CLI, you need to provide the roles yourself. And the roles are owner for the managed identity that you provide. And the Windows 365 service principle needs reader access on your gallery. Once the gallery is attached to a dev center, any image in that gallery that satisfies the requirements can be used to create dev box definitions. And these dev box definitions also specify which version of each image are to be used. It could be a latest to always use the latest version, or it could be a specific version. But enough talk, let's actually do something. And today I was planning to create an Azure Compute Gallery, make a couple of images, and then use DevVox definitions to assign these images to project managers or team leads, and then actually assign and create dev boxes. So I'm gonna be taking you through all the steps required here. So we will be beginning with creating the Azure Compute Gallery. So back to the main page in Azure, and we will look up Compute Galleries and hit create Azure Compute Gallery, select subscription and our resource group. We will call this my first gallery. And of course, in the West Europe region. Next, the role based access control is fine for my use case. So I'll just hit review and create. And then we will see the validation pass and then hit create. And now that I have my gallery, I need to prepare my VMs so that I can capture them. And for this matter, I have created two different VMs so that we can have two different images and you can see the differences between them. I have a DevBox template 01, which is, of course, a standard Windows 11. And you can see that it's a version 2 because we needed it to be a generation 2 VM. And we can also see that it has trusted launch enabled. And of course, it is Windows 11, so it's a Windows operating system. Bit of a small mistake here on my part. I accidentally used the pro version of Windows 11, which is not supported because you need the enterprise version. But other than that, we we're good. So yeah, onto the video again. So I'll just fire it up. And while that is firing up, let's go to our second VM, which is the Dembox template 02. And you can see it the same. It's a Windows based machine. It's Gen 2 and it has trusted launch enabled. So let's start this one up as well. And now that both my VMs are running, let's go into the first one, connect with Bastion, and then my password. And the only thing I really have done with this VM is that I have installed Visual Studio Code, just to have an example software installed. And what I first need to do now is to make the operating system generalized because that was one of the requirements. So I'll just open up Explorer and then navigate into C Windows System 32 and then find sysprep and then start sysprep. And here we need to select the generalize option. And it's also important that we do not select the reboot as the shutdown option. We will do shut down and then hit OK. And this is going to take a few minutes and then the operating system will shut down at which point we will be able to take a snapshot of it. But while sysprep is working on the 
first template. Let's head on over back to Azure and do the same with our second template. So I'll just hit connect again with the Bastion. Input my username and password. And just to have some differences between these images, this one has Notepad++ pre-installed, but otherwise it's the same. Head on over to Explorer and we will navigate uh, to C drive, Windows, and then System32. Find the sysprep folder and just run sysprep. Then select generalize and select shutdown as the shutdown option. Hit OK and then wait. And now my VMs are shut down. So I'll hit close on the Bastion Windows. Then I'll head on back to my virtual machines. Hit refresh and see that the first one is actually now stopped. So I can go back into it now. And then I can select capture in order to convert this VM to an image. And so the resource group for my image is uh, defaulting to the same resource group as the VM is in. Uh, it will be in West Europe, that's fine. And yes, I want to share it to a GAML gallery as VM image version. And on the target Azure Compute Gallery, I will select my first gallery, which was one we created earlier. And it needs to be generalized because otherwise we can't use it for the dev center. And it is since we ran sysprep. And the next step is to select a VM image definition, which we don't have. So we will create a new one and we'll call this my VS code image and we can see here that it's windows it's generation 2 it is trusted launch so that way it does satisfy the requirements for devbox and that's about it we could do some more options here like defining recommended vcpus and su such but we'll skip that for now and just click ok and then we need to input a version number so let's just do 1.0.0 for now and all these are just fine so i'll just hit review and create it does some validation, of course it pauses and creates. All right, so now we should actually have two images in our compute gallery. So let's go back to our main page and then find our gallery. And we can see that we have our notepad image and our VS code image. So now that we have our two images. The next step would usually be to attach this compute gallery to a dev center. But since this is our first dev center, we also need to create a user assigned managed identity that we can use for that dev center. So within the Azure portal, we will search for identity, go to managed identities and then hit create managed identity, select a subscription and select a resource group. We will select also our region. Let's use West Europe for this as well and call it my first identity. And then just hit review and create and then create and wait for the deployment to finish. And now that we have our managed identity, we can go to our dev center and add this managed identity to the dev center. So we'll go back to Azure and to DevBox service. My first dev center, go to identity. Then on user assigned tab, we will hit add and then select my first identity, hit add, and wait for it to be added to our dev center. Once that is done, we can go to Azure Compute Galleries, and then we will hit add, and then we can select the gallery that we created earlier, my first gallery, and then hit add. Now we can see since we've done this from the portal, the role assignments is actually done for us. So the identity that we created was given the owner role on the gallery that we created and the Windows 365 service principle was given the reader role on the gallery we created. And now that we have attached this gallery, we can use the images in that gallery for our DevBox definitions. So let's go to DevBox definitions and then we will create a new one. This will be my VS Code definition. And for image, we can select from our dropdown, we can select the my VS Code image. And for image version here, we have the option of using the one version that we created or just the latest. If we were to create multiple versions here, we will also have these listed. And in this case, I will be using the latest, but keep in mind that this will automatically use the latest version of the images. So if you have specific needs in terms of versioning on the images, then keep in mind what version you select here. You can select a specific version and then the dev box is created based on the dev box definition 
will always be that version. And for compute, we will use the 8V CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and storage will be the 512 gig SSD. Git create. And while that is being created, let's go and create the second devbox definition. This will be my notepad definition. And the image here will be my notepad image. Same here version will be 1.0.0 or latest in this case let's go with the 1.0.0 this will mean that whenever we create a new version of that image in the computer gallery this devbox definition will not be using that new version until we specify so or create another definition for it compute will also be 8v cpu 32 gigs of ram and storage will be the 512 gig ssd let's hit create and then we just have to wait for these devbox definitions to be created and the images validated and so on and so on so let's wait for a few minutes more all right since i was stupid enough to use the pro version of windows 11 this actually failed you can see that the validation of the image failed and is referencing that os version is not supported which is true the pro version is not supported but the enterprise version is so i have now created new images but that means that i need to update the devbox definitions to use the new version so for my notepad definition here let's scroll on down to the right and edit this one and instead of the 1.0.0, let's use the 1.0.1, which is the new image, which is using Windows 11 Enterprise. And hit save, and that would trigger the validation yet again. And hopefully it'll pass this time. All right, so now finally my devbox definitions have been updated and the validation has passed. Hooray! So now we can actually use these devbox definitions in the creation of new devbox pools. So we'll go to projects and my first project, devbox pools. And then let's create new devbox pool. Hit create, call is my VS code pool. And we will select my VS code definition as devbox definition. Network connection would be my first network connection. Local admin is fine. And I confirm that my organization has hybrid benefit. Create, create yet another pool. And this will be my notepad pool. And for this devbox definition, we'll use my notepad definition. Network connection will be the same. Local admin is fine. And I have hybrid benefit licenses. Hit create and then just wait for the devbox pools to be created right so now both of my new pools have been created so that means i should be able to go over to devbox.microsoft.com and create a couple of new dev boxes so i'll hit new dev box and call this uh, vs code for example and for pool i will select my vs code pool select that and hit create and while that is being created, oh, let's also create a dev box from the Notepad++ image. So once again, let's go to new dev box and call this one Notepad. And for the dev box pool, we'll select my Notepad pool and hit create. And this usually takes about half an hour. So uh, let's do some more waiting. And now that my first dev box is created, let's open it up in our browser and see if Visual Studio Code is indeed installed as it should be. So connect. And I give it my password. And we see that Visual Studio is indeed installed as it should. So yeah, that's how you use Azure Compute Galleries in association with DevVox to have multiple images for your DevVox pools. You might have noticed that initially when I was configuring my VMs, I was using Azure Bastion to connect to them. If you want to know more about how to deploy that service, check out this video here. And other than that, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.